Are you ready to learn something new in DaVinci Resolve Fusion? Do you ever feel like you're just barely scratching the surface of the Fusion page? Maybe there's a whole universe of effects you've never even touched or experimented with. Today's the day that we start exploring the black sheep effects of Resolve. These are underused effects that get no respect. We're gonna create this fun effect and learn a few Fusion tricks along the way to help you create better animations. I challenged myself to create a cool effect with a node and effect that I've never used before. Okay, what do you think? I know that there's some Fusion experts out there that know exactly what this is. You're probably thinking, what the heck is that? And I'm not looking to create any kind of effect that looks like this. But there are some interesting uses and some techniques to learn besides just messing up somebody's face. Okay, it's game time. Below is the node tree that's creating this effect. We have 10 nodes. I'm gonna see how many of these you can guess. We're gonna kind of turn them on off, turn them on and off, toggle them, adjust some of the settings, see if you can figure out what they are. And because I'm a nice guy, I'm giving you two nodes. You got the media in and the media out. That leaves eight nodes, which is not too bad, but I'm gonna narrow it down for you a little bit more because there's no merge nodes in this fusion composition. And the node creating the pattern is not one of the standard nodes that you might use a lot. You probably came across it and thought to yourself, what would I ever do with that? Well, it looks like I've figured something out, whether you like it or not, who knows? Okay, we're gonna start simple. I'm gonna to go to node number six and I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on. And let me adjust some of the settings in this node. You see what it's doing? Can you guess? All right, check that out. All right, that is node number six. If you know it, let me know. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at nodes eight and nine. They kind of work together. So we can see, check out my hand here, and I'm gonna disable node nine, and let's see what happens. And I'm gonna adjust the level on it. Node eight is, is works with node nine, but let's take a look at what it do. What, let's take a look what it does. I'm gonna enable it and disable it. That might not tell you much. So let me play around with some of the settings here. You don't have to get the exact node name for this one, but maybe kind of the class or function of this node because there's several others that do similar things. Moving on to node number four. This is a node I've used quite a bit. Um, you can really do some interesting things with it. We're gonna turn it on and off. And let's play with some of the settings. Okay, moving on to node number five. This is one of my favorite nodes. And what this one is doing is this is actually refining the pattern. Let's take a look and make some adjustments here. You see what it's doing? What node is node number five? So what node, would you look, you, what node would you use to do something like this? And I'll also remember this is Fusion, so and I do know that there's a lot of different ways to use an effect, but I'm gonna show you what I did in just a bit. Time for node number two. This is one you might wanna pay attention to. That's a hint. Let's uh, play around with some of these different settings. All right, any idea what that one's doing? If you know, if you know what it is, let me know down in the comments below. Node three. This one is kind of similar to the other one that we did. Um, we're going to be able to adjust it and kind of pick up different levels on the pattern. Um, and this one is being used in conjunction with some of the other ones to create the effect. And now it comes to node number seven. This is the uh, last one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust some of the settings in this one. So in just a second, we're going to jump into Fusion and we're going to recreate this node tree. And I'm going to show you exactly what each of these nodes are. And you can maybe learn a few different things. Um, even if you're not trying to create this effect, I think there's some interesting things you can learn from, learn from this node tree. Um, and maybe come up with other ways or other different effects that you can do with it. Um, and then I'm also going to show you the pattern effect and some different ways to use that that you might be able to use it in other animations just besides putting some crazy pattern on some crazy pattern on your face. I want to give you guys a real quick update on Spark Effects. There's a new version that's going to be coming out soon. It's going to have a lot of great stuff in it with some new features and effects. Um, if you're not familiar with SparkFX, you can go to sparkfxstudio.com and download it. This is the, what I'm calling the ultimate add-on tool for DaVinci Resolve. Um, it's something I've created, adding um, a lot of effects, scripts, and workflow automations all into one easy-to-use package. It includes timeline editing tools, spell check, search, a Meteor browser, awesome Resolve plug plugins, and a whole lot more. It's all accessible from one easy-to-use application. Go to sparkfxstudio.com, download it, give it a try, and let me know what you think. All right, let's dive into Fusion, and we're gonna make this animation, and I'm gonna reveal what each of these nodes is and see if you were able to figure it out. All right, we have a Fusion composition here with a media in node that has um, my face in it, and let's start creating this effect. So the first thing we're gonna do is, with the media in one selected, hit Control Space and search for Color Corrector. You might have guessed this one. This one I thought would be pretty easy for you guys, and this was node number six. So when we come in here to Color Corrector, you can see we can kind of go crazy, do all sorts of colors, and mess with some gain channels, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so that's node number six. Okay, the next node we're going to do, which is the big mystery node, this is, this is the black sheep. I'm not going to keep you guys waiting any longer. It is the stylized node. 
never used it before. I kind of um, looked at it and it, I didn't really think that I could do much with it. So that's what's my challenge in this video. Um, hopefully you guys like this. So let's add the stylized note in there and see how we can apply that to my face and use it to create a pattern. To hit control space and search for stylize and add that in. All right. And this, we're going to put this effect and we're going to merge it in with the color corrector. So let's take the media in and put it into the stylize and take a look. All right, there you go. So these are all kinds of different effects. And this is really creating a pattern. And you'll see that it's really nice because the pattern moves along with my face. Okay, we'll go through a few different options here because you can kind of see some of the different effects you can create with the stylized node. All right, so what we're going to do is, yeah, this one is particularly ugly there. So we're going to take the output of the stylized node and use that to determine where the color corrector is going to make adjustments. So let's take the output of the stylized and put it into the mask of the color corrector. And we'll go to the color corrector and we'll start making adjustments. And you'll see that they're kind of showing up everywhere. And that's because we need to adjust the mask. The mask is actually looking at the alpha channel by default. And you'll see that there's no alpha. This is just kind of a black and white. It has colors in it. There's no um, transparency on it. So let's go to the color corrector. We'll hit F2 so we can see it and go to settings. And right here for channel, this is going to be the channel that the mask input is using. And we're going to set it to luminance. And there you can see all, all of a sudden that uh, what you're seeing is the pattern is showing, starting to show up on my face. And we can adjust the pattern here. We'll try a different one. All right, and we got the pattern on my face, and the pattern actually moves along with, the with my face based on how that effect is set up. And we can even take it if we want to go to the color corrector, and we can click Apply Mask Inverted, and you'll see now we have some lines on the face. That's how we're getting the pattern on the face. Now, you'll notice that, let's uh, go ahead and flip this back. I wanted the effect to only apply to the face, but it's applying the color correction everywhere. So what we needed to do is we're gonna have to mask this out. Now, there's already a mask on the color corrector, so we're gonna have to do another mask, basically. And what we're gonna use for that is we want to isolate just my face. So let's gonna, we're gonna add a 3D keyer. Hit Control Space and search for 3D keyer. And then we're going to take the output of the media in and put that into the 3D keyer. So we're just going to try to find my face there. So let's put the 3D keyer in the viewer. And all we need to do is click this little uh, this icon here. And we're just going to draw a line on my face. And you'll see that it found it pretty good. Now, um, we need to subtract some areas and add some areas. So we're going to hit this little um, subtraction. We're going to click the subtraction picker and draw, draw right in there. Kind of draw all the areas that we want to subtract. And we're going to need to add some areas back in. So we hit the plus and add these back in. And this is where you just kind of want to start refining it. We'll take a look here. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to pick the parts that we want the color corrector to affect. And we're just going to get in here and try to get it pretty close to my face. You'll see that there's some parts in here that aren't right. So we have my face pretty much masked out. Now we can't, because we already have the mask input on the color corrector, what we're going to do is we're going to use a new node here and hit control space. Um, click in the node area, hit control space, and we're going to search for brightness contrast. We're going to disconnect here. We're going to take the output of the color corrector and put it into the brightness contrast, and then the brightness contrast in the media out. All right, so now we're going to take the output of the delta keter and put it into the mask input of the brightness contrast, and click this A box here, and that's going to allow us to basically take all that stuff out, take the gain all the way down. So. We're kind of masking with the color corrector to do the pattern, and then we're creating another mask so that we're only selecting we want, what we want with the delta keyer. Now, you notice that the delta keyer doesn't get everything right, and my hands are going to be in there, um, a lot of stuff. So that's where the next one comes in. We don't want my hands, and we don't want this other stuff. Outside of this uh, delta keyer, we're going to add an ellipse right here. And this is, I think these are nodes 8 and 9. We're going to take the output of the ellipse and put it in the delta keyer. And we're just going to move this pretty close to my face. Now we could track this, but I don't think I move around a whole lot. So that should get it pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and change that pattern because I want to see what, what else we can do. And we'll go to the color corrector and let's uh, apply mask inverted. Okay, so that's the pattern. Now I wanted to be able to do a few more things with this pattern to give myself a few more options. So coming out of this stylize, what I added was a, um, another brightness contrast. So we're going to hit control space, search for brightness contrast. And this is going to allow us to actually select the levels. So we can kind of really start refining 
that mask. I mean, so we can really start refining the pattern. We can add some gain to it, adjust it. Um, and what's coming out of here is really we're going to just, this is going to be the mask for our color corrector. So let's go to the stylize. We're going to choose another one again. Let's do that one. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. And bump up the pattern, bring this contrast. And this, so this is really where you could play around with this to create, um, you know, different kinds of effects or looks. You can kind of have it come on and come off. All right, outside of the brightness contrast, the next thing we added was an edge detect. And this is one that you can turn on and off. The, uh, not the, this one, the edge detect works really well if you, let me put the, go back to the brightness contrast. If you have really big patterns, let me reset this and go to the stylize and we're gonna take the pattern and bring it way down. So you gotta see we have these really big shapes. We go to the brightness contrast and we'll see, we can actually take the saturation down so you can kind of see it. And we'll try to tune this a little bit to get these shapes really sharp. All right, now let's go to the edge detect. And it's kind of going crazy there, but we can adjust the brightness and the width of this, bring it down, and you can start to see these patterns. Now let's go to the color corrector, and you'll see that. Let's invert it back, and there we go. We got some circles around my eyes, circle around my face. Uh, let's go ahead and change the color here. Go to the color corrector. Let's, let's go for a uh, let's go for a blue. And then we can adjust the, the gain and contrast here. Lift, kind of create a really interesting effect. Now, the last thing, let's take a look at the edge detect. It's just this black and white. So this is our mask. And what that means is everywhere where it's white, the color corrector is going to affect it. Everywhere where it's black, it's not. So let me put these side by side so you can kind of see what's going on here. Like this. Okay, so get that off the screen. I'm going to zoom in here. So you can see we have this circle here and there. Now let's go back. We're going to put the color corrector in uh, no, in section two. All right, so there's the circle. You can see everywhere it's white, we're going to have the color corrector affect it. So we just need one more refinement to really get us there. Outside of edge detect, we're going to hit control space and we're going to search for bitmap. Bitmap node is awesome. The bitmap node is going to enable us to refine the black and white pattern. So let's take the output of the edge detect into the bitmap and then we're going to take the bitmap and put it into the mask input of the color corrector. And we're going to have to make a change because of this. So we're going to set the bitmap to use the, just like before, the luminance channel. And now we can really start refining these black and white sections. So this is allowing you to set the low and high values that the bitmap is going to do. So the bitmap allows you to adjust the black and white image to create a mask that's really going to be refined. This, uh, the lower part is going to, when you bring this down, it's going to include more white. And when you bring this up, it's going to include more black. So by adjusting the black and white level, we can get interesting patterns here. All right, so we have that. Now let's go to the color corrector. And there we go. You can see it's right on there. And the, the bitmap allowed us to really refine that pattern. Depending on the pattern, if the pattern's really complicated, um, like we'll bump that up. Um, the edge detect on there, this is where I would turn the edge detect off maybe and get kind of a different look. And then we can use this brightness contrast here. So all these, all these kind of work together to really allow you to refine, refine the effect. And let's take a look at the output here. There we go. It's just my head. Now we may need to do a few more masking options. And what I, basically what I did is I took this effect and put it on, overlaid it on top of the other video and able to create some really interesting looks. Okay. So the next question is, all right, this is great for messing up my face, but what else is there that we can do with it? Well, um, a lot of times I'll use like a fast noise or other things to generate a pattern for either displays or background image or things like that. Well, you can use the same stylized thing to create a really interesting pattern. Let me show you. Let's jump into the media pool here. I just got an image of waves and let's put that in the viewer and we'll go to one viewer. Well, okay, that's, that's a little bit interesting, but what if we took these waves and let's add the stylized note to it. I'm going to hit control space and search for stylize. If we can type and bring that in here. And there we go. We have some a really interesting pattern. You can adjust it. And because the, because the stylized node creates the pattern with, along with the animation, you have a moving animation. What if you took one of these and well, we could combine them. So we get another stylized node. We'll bring it in here and we'll merge this one right on top. And let's just take this one and uh, in this merge, we're just going to rotate it around. Take a look and make it a bit bigger. And let's set the, set the blend mode and we'll set it to screen or let's see multiply. And we have a really interesting looking pattern. And we can use some of these other techniques where you use the brightness con you can use some of the other techniques with the brightness contrast 
and color correctors and all sorts of things. So um, let's go ahead and change the stylized too. Let's put it on one of these other. And because these are overlaid, you actually have this um, kind of interesting effect here. We'll take this and we'll kind of bring it up. And this is a pattern. You could use this pattern to uh, drive an animation, do a displace, lots of different things. Maybe we want to make it a little bit bigger. We could just kind of scale it up or scale it down. So anyway, that's just an idea of how you might be able to use the stylized node. There's probably a lot of other things you could do with it, but um, it's great for creating weird effects on the face, but it also may be really interesting for creating a pattern. You could find um, different videos, different images, and use that with the different effects to mix up the pattern and create some really great effects. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this animation. And um, actually, if you think of a use for this effect that's maybe something different, or if you want to do this, let me know. I'd be curious to see what you guys are uh, able to create using Black Sheep effect, the effect that nobody really ever uses, or I've never used it. And there's probably really maybe even something a lot more interesting that you could do than I came up with. But the challenge is what makes it interesting. That's what I'm doing here, I guess. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.